What's up, everybody? Uh, it's International Investing's channel again. I'm your host, Major Tom. Nice to meet you all. Um, if you're new here, if you're returning, I've got some pretty interesting news for you. So let's slide this off to the side. And uh, without a further ado, let's get into the charting here. All right, so take a look at this. So we're going to go back to our, our um, investing tools. We're going to take a quick look going into next week on how the market has changed, right? So we had one big news drop. Um, that was that OPEC is basically reducing production on oil, which in turn is going to hit the Fed's inflation expectations pretty, pretty hard in a negative way, which could be very, very bad for the economy. And I am expecting an overall bearish, basically like a bearish response for the entirety of next week until we get another good inflation reading. So that's kind of my overall macro outlook on the market. And when we take a look at the uh, plays over here, in the number one seat, we still have Peloton. Peloton calls still have a 30% price spread. So again, the EPS price was roughly like $16 in the last uh, Peloton report. So let's evaluate Peloton real quick. <clears throat> On the last earnings report, Peloton was up here around the $16 level, where it IV crushed out pretty much. Now it's currently trading at $11. Listen, Peloton was on our number one plays list for a while now. We started buying um, calls in Peloton and also shorting puts on Peloton, since we pretty much exclusively play um, credit spreads in the hedge fund. Um, we've pretty much been shorting puts below the $9 level. Now I'm thinking it's okay to short $10 and 10.50 puts as we continue this proof of concept, this momentum upswing. If we take a look at this right here, we can see we have an upper resistance level and we have a support level. We just bounced off that support level, which is a great higher low. So if we look here, we have a higher low here, higher low here, higher low here, higher low here, and again, a proven support level right here at this higher low. <clears throat> That's always really, really good. As we bounce back up to test this resistance level, take a look at how price action reacts. I wouldn't be surprised to bust through this resistance and continue a rise up to $14, $15, $16, where it should be fairly priced at. Um, like I said, not too bullish on Peloton long term, but at least going into this earnings report, we have a lot of good statistics to look at here. So if I move my camera up to the top right, <clears throat> I can show you the earnings spreads over here. So the actual earnings on last report was a negative one. So for every $1 invested in the company, the company basically lost a dollar, which isn't completely terrible. I mean, it's, it's not good for sure. They're not making money. But if we take a look at what they're estimated to make in May 10th is when they drop their earnings, their estimate is actually negative 0.48. So they're looking at becoming almost profitable next quarter. And if you're an, if you're an investor, especially a fundamental investor, this should interest you because Peloton has been a short target for a long, long time. And one of the biggest things that influences a uh, market rally on a heavily shorted stock is a massive shift in fundamentals, right? We saw this with GameStop when GameStop was number one on our fundamental scanner um, before their last earnings report. Now we're taking a look at this, and if Peloton does have a beat to the upside, which by the way, they haven't done in their last four reports, um, and they actually report a profit or close to even, um, we could see a massive shift in sentiment on this stock. And who knows what kind of exposure that would, that would do to the shorts. So Peloton, Definitely quite the battlefield to get into if you're looking to get bullish on a stock right now. Um, because we're going into a bear market, just be careful on how many bullish plays you take. We do have a lot of bullish plays in the tool set right here, but I will show you some bearish plays as well, since I do believe next week is going to get pretty bearish. So for the next stock, we're going to look at Deutsche Bank. So there's a reason why we're looking at Deutsche Bank here. All the banks have been going under this uh, preface that they're all struggling, um, liquidity's drying up, we have banking issues, correct? So <clears throat> when I'm looking at Deutsche Bank, what I'm looking for is a proof of concept that 
Deutsche is different from all the other banks. And one of the things that sticks out to me is the last earnings report that Deutsche had. They were projected to be profitable and they beat their expectation by 211%, ended up coming in at a close to one EPS. So for every $1 invested, they made an extra dollar, which is very, very good. Um, and their next estimate is actually projected to be 0.55. If we see another beat come out from Deutsche, again, their last one, two, three, four earnings have been beats. So the probability of a beat on this earning is actually probably pretty high um, since the, the rating... Um, the rating parties have been low in the past for earnings. It's likely that they're low on this estimate as well. And we could come out with a Deutsche beat close to the one, one plus side as well. This earnings report on the 27th of April, which by the way, the 27th of April is only three weeks away from um, pretty much tomorrow. And that is not a long period of time. If you want to get bullish on Deutsche Bank and you want to buy calls, you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea if the market dumps this stock even further. If, if there's another banking crisis or another banking news play comes out and uh, a hit piece drops this stock from like $10.30 down to like $9, definitely put this on your radar as a watch list stock. Because if you see this drop to $9.850, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate loading the boat on calls with two weeks expiration. So you're paying basically no theta. And just watching this earnings beat send this stock upwards. <clears throat> so um, going back to the chart here, we have Aloka Corporation as the number three on the list. Of course, we're going to check that out. So this is a Loka Corporation. <clears throat> and for those of you who have no idea what a Loka Corp is, because it is a, a little bit of a um, you know interesting stock that I personally haven't heard of before, they produce... Box, bauxite, aluminum, and alumina, and aluminum products. All right, so they're basically they basically create um, metal through the mining process. So they, they create different commodities, right? Particularly like aluminum type commodities. That's interesting to know because commodities right now are actually doing really really well. So if you take a look at silver and gold, silver, gold, and other precious metals are doing amazing. Um, in this environment. Why? Because everyone is scared of the US dollar being um, basically inflated to infinity. And um, at that point, the US dollar is basically going to be worth nothing. So people are rushing to get their hands on gold and silver products and just other metal commodities. So investing in commodities isn't the worst idea right now. It's actually probably a very, very good idea. And if we take a look at a loca right here, you know, we have a support level at 3836, currently trading at 39. Out of all the bullish plays, I'd say I'm probably most bullish on Aloka Corp right now. If we look at their last earnings, their last earnings was just barely not profitable. This next earnings estimate is projected to be profitable. Again, I love, 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 love when you come out with an earnings report and it's a, you know, a shift in sentiment, right? So if we look at the, the last uh, four earnings here, we have a steady decline on EPS or earnings per share. Looking at the next earnings, this is the first time we're breaking the trend downward and we're actually pushing up, which is a very, very, very good sign. And in this recessionary environment, in this inflation environment, I love, love, love commodity companies and a local corp provides what we need. This is a very, very, very good fundamental base play. It's a good macro base play. And to top things off, their earnings report is actually on Wednesday the 19th. So if we take a look at our calendar, that is eight business days away. So you could play two-week contracts starting on Monday on this stock. And potentially, if they come out with a beat on this earnings report, they will be profitable and break the sentiment trend, causing some shorts to get short squeezed out of this stock. Again, short sellers love attacking companies that are fundamentally losing value. The second you start flipping the switch and gaining profitability, that's when the sentiment shifts. That's when short sellers start rushing to cover. If we look at the fair value currently, currently the stock should be valued at $52.61. Today, that's where the fair value should be. Currently, we're trading at $39.20. And if we look back in time, the last time it was trading at this level was back on November 2nd of 2022. So I think 
at these levels, you're getting an amazing, amazing deal. This stock also has dividends. So if you are an investor that has a lot of money and you're just looking to sink it somewhere and just let it sit, just let it, wait, let it hold forever, this is an amazing stock to long-term invest in. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So out of all the stocks that I'm most bullish on, this is probably on my number one list. Even though it's not number one on the actual tool, it's number three, um, you know, Deutsche Bank is in the middle of a banking crisis. We take a look at Peloton, you know, it, it doesn't have the best track record and it doesn't have the best long-term outlook, but we take a look at a local corporation. It has a great long-term outlook. The macro environment perfectly matches what they're selling. There is a lot of, of uh, profitability to be had here, in my opinion. I feel like this stock, you know, while the fair value today is probably at $52.40, you could probably make a bull argument that the, that the stock is probably worth even more due to commodity pricing right now. You could probably get $65 a share out of this or more. Um, and, you know, long term, if you hold a stock, it doubles in value and you continuously get paid dividends while you hold it. Like, that's an amazing win, win, win. So, um, even if you're just mildly interested in investing in this and you just pick up one call contract to potentially redeem shares at a later date, you know, who's to say that after this earnings drop, if they're profitable, the stock doesn't shoot back up to $60, $70. It's very, very possible. And I might actually pick up some, some call contracts two weeks out just to uh, get a little exposure to that. But we'll see how uh, the market kind of reacts to it next week. If we do get into a bearish environment, you might be able to see the stock get a little bit lower. But I don't think you're going to get much lower besides like 38, 37 before earnings. Um, I'd be very surprised to see a 35. Very, very, very surprised. If you can get 35, I would hammer the calls. Hammer it. But again, that's not investing advice. That's just how I'm going to play it. Um, looking at Twilo, Twilo is actually... Number five on our list, I didn't cover Elan because Elan's uh, options are a little bit hard to trade. It's an $11 stock, and just at, at that pricing, um, it's hard to play options, especially when it's kind of a liquid to trade. Um, there's not many trades going on in the stock is basically what I'm saying. So let's take a look at Twilo. So for those of you that don't know, um, Twilo engages in the development of communication software. It's a cloud-based platform. All right, so that should be pretty much all you need to know. They have about 8.2 thousand employees, so it's a very legitimate company. And if we take a look at the last past earnings, we're seeing a, um, a, this is a growth tech company. This is a tech company and they are growing. So ever since Q3 of 2022, the earnings reports have been going in the upward direction, which tells me they are more and more profitable every quarter. So they're doing the right things, right? They're doing the right things. Let's scroll out a little bit and let's see if the trend on the stock kind of matches what I'm seeing in the earnings reports. So ever since Q3, so that's one, two earnings back, we started a steady EPS rise. And in the fair market system, we always preach fair market system. Like if it is a fair market system, if the market believes the stock should be worth more then the stock typically goes up. And this just proves my point, people. It proves my point. So the stock was declining before Q3. What was happening? You see the price declining. What happens when they when they have their first earnings beat and almost end up profitable? You see a massive rally back up to the upside to like $55. And um, when we have another proof of concept over here on Q4, we had a massive surge up to like $77. Now, why, if, if our next estimate is at 0.2, so it's expected to be more profitable, right, than the last earnings report, why is the stock down here at 60 bucks? Shouldn't it be fairly priced around here at $69? After they showed proof of concept and profitability over here on this quarter, Shouldn't we back be back up here at $69 plus? I mean, that's what that's how I look at stocks. That's how I evaluate is the market fairly pricing this in? I don't think it is here. And if you want exposure to the tech sector, Twilo might be your your bullish ticket there, you know? Um, it's, a, it's a nice little tech stock. So we have a commodity stock. We have a banking stock. If you're looking to get into financials, we have a consumer product stock with Peloton. And now I'm showing you a bullish tech stock with Twilo. So you have many, many options here to get bullish in this, in this bearish environment <clears throat> if you're looking to get a little bit of diversity in your portfolio. So take a look at that. And sorry if I sound a little bit hoarse. I've, I've been sick for the last week and I'm really just struggling to get over it. Um, <clears throat> But for those of you that are, oh, 
we got one more bullish play. I will show one more bullish play and then I will go right into being a bad bear again. All right. <clears throat> so the last bullish play is actually a firm. So a firm, for those of you that don't know, and I'm saying this off the cuff because I've actually seen a firm in stores. Um, you can see a firm in like Walmart, other major retailers. What a firm does is it gives you the ability to pay for stuff over a duration of time instead of immediately at checkout. So basically, if I wanted to pay for a $250 item, I could pay in $50 payments instead of $250, and a firm will charge me a little bit of interest in order to make that happen. Um, yep, that's pretty much it. So it's a commerce slash financial stock uh, type of company. And if we take a look at the fair value, <clears throat> we have an estimate up here of around $15.25, currently trading at $10.61. So we're looking at like a 50%-ish climb, maybe 40%-ish climb. And the next earnings estimate is a negative 0.91. So we're not quite going to get positive on this next earnings report, but we are expecting an increase in uh, profitability. So in this, in this market environment, there's been a lot of tech companies and financial companies that have, um, when money was free and they could borrow it at zero interest, <clears throat> they brought in a huge amount of staff to support their HR their IT departments, and um, just their day-to-day -day operations. Now, a lot of that can be trimmed out without the company falling apart and actually just making more and more profitability for the company. And those are moves that you're going to see in this environment. So I actually expect these guys to beat earnings because I'm expecting them to cut the slack on some of these HR employees, IT employees, and kind of add to the EPS every quarter, we're looking at this coming in with a negative uh, 0.91. So if we are able to trim some of the slack, we can get this up to like 0.7, maybe negative 0.7, negative 0.6. We can see massive, massive change here. And, you know, they're not, um, they're not uncapable of showing beats. As we see back here in Q3 of 2022, they showed a massive beat of 63%. So it's very possible. It's very possible. And look, this would be the first time that they would break the trend and almost get towards the, pop, the profitable side. You know, it could be a, sh a shift in sentiment as well. It could cause a little bit of a squeezy, sque squeezy McSqueezy, um, as Charlie from Zip Trader says. Very, very good channel if you haven't checked him out yet. <clears throat> but, it, you know, it's one of those stocks to just keep an eye on. I'm not extremely bullish at these levels at $11 for 15 or $11 for 14. I'm not extremely bullish. But I'm also, I've been selling puts at this level right here. You know, if, if you can sell puts at the $9 strike and make a significant profit from it, go for it. Um, I 100% love that play. Um, and we have been doing that with, with the hedge fund. So Affirm is one of those stocks that was at the top of the list a while ago. We've been hitting it, hitting it, hitting it. When it was number three, we were hitting it, hitting it, hitting it by selling puts. And then now it's kind of back in our radar. We made that money from all that premium that we sold. And now it's right back, you know, in the number five spot. It's starting to show, you know, a little bit of weakness going into earnings. By the way, earnings are May 10th. So we still have a little while out. I don't really recommend playing any calls on this. But if you want to short puts, I definitely could get behind that. I could definitely see some, pre some uh, free premium to be made there. Now, I can finally get bearish. Let's take a look at the first put play down here on the list. We have General Electric over here with 16% um, price spread. All right. So <clears throat> GE, I think they sell like appliances and stuff. Um, commercial and military aircraft, engines and systems, wind, other renewable energy generation equipment, grid solutions, gas, steam, nuclear, and other power generation equipment. Um, yeah, GE is a massive company, by the way. They have 172,000 employees. Um, this, this is probably a similar to like a Boeing type company, but they also, I know they sell appliances as well. I see them all the time at work. So, you know, this is, this is definitely a diverse company. Um, and we take a look at their fundamentals, you know, their fundamentals are pretty decent here. If we look at the, uh, at the earnings reports, right? So, um, it's a little bit all over the place though. So, so starting at Q1 of 2022, we were at just barely profitable 
then we started trimming some slack. We came up a little bit, fell a little bit. And then we had a major beat last quarter, which if we take a look at the price action before last quarter, you know, the stock was just kind of oscillating, oscillating. And then we had our last quarter earnings, which was able to drive the stock from $78 all the way up to close to a hundred bucks again. Okay. That's really good, right? It's really good. The stock was, was driven all the way up to like close to a hundred dollars. That's, that's great. They had a great quarter. Look, it is up here at 97 bucks. It's currently trading at 94 bucks. It's still showing pretty good proof of concept at these levels. But if we take a look at their next earnings estimate, they're estimated only down here at 0.13. That's barely profitable, which doesn't make any sense to me. Like why did they smash last quarter out of the park with a 1.24? And their next quarter is 0.13. To me, that, that that looks like they're not selling gigantic airplanes that that bring in a lot of revenue. That's what that's what it looks like to me. Now, um, <clears throat> I get it. The stock was up here at $100 when they showed a 1.24 EPS. But if they go back to a 0.13 EPS, I can't support the stock at $104. I just can't. And we see a spread of like close to 40% here. And the, uh, the fair value today is, is looking around $78. So there's quite some room to short this. There's quite some room to, to short calls. I've been shorting the 100 strike because that's a massive resistance point. It's a massive, massive resistance point. So up here at 94, you know, I'd be comfortable shorting 97s, 100 calls. Um, if you're looking to get bearish into this bearish environment, I really do love this play. I love shorting the 100 calls. I love shorting the 97 calls. You know, and if you're looking for um, here, I'll kind of show you what I'm doing here. So let's take a look at General Electric. And its earnings is in 25th of April. So they're actually really, really soon. We don't need a whole lot of exposure here. Um, so if we just do 19 days worth of exposure and we want to short the 97, maybe by the 100, um, you can have a 71% chance of profit and you can make $83 for a potential, a potential loss of $217. So you're almost getting a one to one ratio here, or sorry, a two to one ratio here of risk versus reward. And you have a 71% chance of profit. This is a trade that we love to take as a hedge fund. We love to take these trades because Take a look at this going into their earnings report. If their earnings just come out as expected, you can expect the stock to kind of fall off. And even in a bearish environment, you can just expect the stock to fall off. And every single day that the stock just sits and doesn't do anything, you stand to make 3% <clears throat> of your investment. All right, check, check. Sorry about that. My headset just died. All right, so midstream here. All right, <clears throat> going back into it. Again, so sorry. If we want to short the 100 calls, maybe buy like the 102s, we have an 80% chance of profit and um, $34 with a profit we can take and with a max loss of 166. Again, even shorting the 100 calls, we have a much higher chance of profit. And I really don't mind the risk versus reward here because we're barely taking any risk. Like if you have an 80% chance of profit, you're going to win eight times out of 10. And, uh, you know, $34 eight times is pretty, pretty good. Um, considering the max loss is only 166 bucks. So if we lose here, if we take our max loss twice, <clears throat> We're going to get to like 320 bucks. And if we win eight times, we get to like $240. So again, that's not terrible. And it's actually pretty good because we're, we're given an 80% chance of profit. So when we're breaking down these plays, this is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at my risk versus reward profiles. I'm looking at, look, hey, where am I going with this? Right. And look at the theta decay too on these. You know, like it has a really, really high break even. 
the break even here is as long as the stock on expiration day is below 99.50, you're chilling. You're chilling with your 34 bucks and you're walking away. You're only tying up $300 to make 34 bucks. You're getting better than a 10% return on investment. You know, that's really, really good in my opinion. So just food for thought here. That's that's how we play uh, credit spreads. <clears throat> so we take a look at Tesla. Tesla is another put play. Tesla was actually like the number two or the number three um, to the put side. And it recently just had a massive short attack for no real good reasons. I believe insiders were selling shares or something like that. But um, Tesla was a major play that we were taking. We were short Tesla calls at 210. 215, 220. And, um, you know, we, we had it up here at 210 is the last time it touched. You know, we got into the, we got into the, the short calls probably back here at like the 200 level. Also up here at the 210 level, we added to our position because Tesla had like a 40% price spread, which is a lot for a liquid stock like this. And, uh, you know, they're going into earnings here on the, on the 19th and they're projected lower. So if there's one thing that I can tell you about investing, again, you know, a lot of people like to say, oh, I didn't win because of this or that or this or that or markets rigged. Look, I'm telling you, this is a fair market system, right? Thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people are going to every day price this stock at what they think it's worth, right? So if people don't think the stock is worth $210, you're going to see it traded 185, and that's what we see right now. It's still overvalued. Tesla's fair price today is around 150 bucks. It had this massive surge up on the latest bull trend, and it just goes to show that if you don't have the fundamentals to back this move, you're not going to stay up there. Take a look at the next earnings. It's it's coming down from 1.2 EPS to 0.86. That's less than a dollar of profit for every one dollar invested. So they're losing out. They're losing out on revenue. Something bad is happening fundamentally with their company, and I can't put my finger on it. All I can tell you is the numbers don't make sense, right? That's what the algorithm looks for. It looks for numbers that don't make sense. I'm showing you right now. Look, the stock is value, fair valued at 150 bucks because the EPS is scheduled to decline, and they're releasing their earnings on 19 April, which is very, very soon. Right, so for 10 days or two weeks worth of exposure, you could basically stand to make 15% in delta right here, delta or a difference in price. Right, so when we talk about you know getting bearish on the stock, right, I like to short calls. So if we take a look and we do something like we did for GE here on Tesla, again, I think Tesla when it fell from 210 was a beautiful short target. Now, I'm a little bit scared to get, sh you know, too short on Tesla, so I wouldn't recommend going full boat on this. But if you're just looking to like, you know, make a little side money and you're not looking for an incredible amount of risk, going short, it's at 285 right now. Going short like 290s and going long like the 2 probably like the 195. That's a 60% chance of profit. That's probably a little risky going short the 195 and buying the 200. That's a 65% chance of profit. Let's see. Let's see what we can do here. We bring it out to May 5th. This is actually pretty good. This is pretty, pretty good. <clears throat> so this one has, if we go short the 195, we go long the 197.50 for the May 5th expiration. We can actually get a $93 profit and a maximum loss of 157 bucks. So that's pretty much a two to one ratio of um, reward versus, or sorry, risk versus reward, which isn't bad. And the chance of profit is 63%. So what does that mean? That means this is amazing, amazing trade to take. It's an amazing trade to take, right? If, if, if 63 times out of 100, we're making $93, and, you know, the other half of the times we're losing only 157, you know, it's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So we're getting better than a coin flip and we're making more than half of a, of our, our risk, which is really, really good. Half of our risk here would be like 70 bucks. 
So I, I do love this play. I, w I would actually consider it. Um, if Tesla starts to go up anymore, I'm definitely looking to get more of these. So we exited the 210 position because we got almost 100% of our, our um, max profit out of it. I'm considering re-entering on Tesla at a lower strike and going short like a 95, a 195, or a 200, or something like that. Um, I just, at this level, it's kind of like a, I don't know. I don't hate it. I don't love it. And again, one of the biggest things, people started YOLOing money into Tesla when they heard about the government grants that came out for the electric vehicles in next year and towards the end of this year. I can't preach this enough. It's not guaranteed that Tesla is going to get that money. There's a bunch of comp companies that are fighting for those government contracts. Um, and I know what that process is like. Nothing is guaranteed. Nothing. Nothing is guaranteed when it comes to government contracts. So, you know, all you need to look at is what they're projected to make and what they made. Right? That's all you need to look at. You can get real into the weeds with, oh, well, I think Tesla's going to go up and they're going to beat by 200% because of this crazy event. Look, the odds of a 200% beat are very low. Very, very, very low. And the odds of, you know, even a 20% beat are very, very low. So when it comes to this stuff, the estimate is 80% of the time within 10%, you know, of the actual. So keep that in mind when you're trying to determine where stocks are going to be at after earnings reports and where the fundamentals of the company lie. This is how we kind of put price to, uh, to a company. Looking at COTY. So COTY is the last bearish play of the day. Take a look at it right here. It is the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13th. 13, 13, number 13 on our list. We have puts. It's still a weak buy because we're 27 days away from earnings. We have about a 15% price spread on this stock. Fair value somewhere around $10. Currently trading at $11.64. Um, this is like an honorable mention type deal. And I say this because the stock's only $11. So the options are probably illiquid. The only reason why I'm bringing this up is because the average volume on this stock is like 4.22 million. So the shares are definitely being traded. Your options are definitely going to be bought or sold. Um, it's just whether or not you feel comfortable buying a crap load or selling a crap load of contracts at the you know $10 or $11 strike companies. Um, it's You're going to have to... Definitely scale up your positions if you're even an intermediate trader and you have an account that's 10K. You're going to have to scale your positions up, you know, to, to get $500 worth of premium out of this. Um, so we'll take a look at how that looks as well. Because we've looked at big companies. We've looked at selling spreads on big companies. We haven't looked at selling spreads on small companies. So I can kind of touch on that a little bit as a closeout. Um, taking a look at COTY here, our next earnings estimate is coming in at point. 03. So they're looking at going from a 0.22 to a 0.03. That is quite a massive gap to the downside. Um, and I say that because they're getting dangerously close to not being profitable. And again, the same way we can have a shift in sentiment from a bullish right here. So we have one, two, three legs higher. This is a bullish momentum fundamentally to a bearish shift we can also have a bearish to a bullish so um just keep that in mind is is like you can always play this the reverse way and again to prove to you that that we live in a fair market system i'm going to show you the price action this is q4 of 2022 when they first announced that they were still um still negative but next quarter they expect to turn a profit you know what the short seller said? They said, we don't believe you, and they shorted the stock down. What happened next quarter when they reported a profit, even though they missed their expectation by 2%? A massive short squeeze happened. Massive short squeeze happened. Between that quarter and the next quarter, the stock rallied. Forty-seven percent. Forty-seven percent. 
So shifts in sentiment are very, very powerful. Very, very powerful fundamentally. Now, if we look at our last earnings report, we're still riding the momentum to the upside here. We're sitting up here at eleven dollars. But the question is, you know, if the stock's fairly valued at ten bucks and the sentiment shifts to the downside, since we're almost negative on profitability, that's probably gonna value the stock down here and open it up to short selling. And again, we've seen what happens when people short stocks. Like, look, this stock was down here at $6.50, right? When it was being short attacked, it was down here at $6.50 a share. There is no reason why it can't go back to $6.50 a share. No reason at all, especially in the current market environments. So can't stress it enough. You know, be careful. Know the fundamentals behind what you're trading. And uh, let's take a look at a potential play here with COTY. So we want to get bearish. So we're going to take a bear call spread here. It's a credit spread. Um, the current stock is trading at $11.63. In, in a bear call spread, we're looking at selling calls above the current price because we don't think it's going to reach that price. So we can take a look at the $12 calls since we're pretty close to it. So if we go out to May 5th and allow 26 days worth of theta, we can collect $27 from selling a contract at the $12 strike and buying a contract at the $13 strike. We can open ourselves up to a max loss of $73. So that's roughly a three to one, but we are also, remember, getting a chance of profit of 70% on that. Every single day we stand to make 3% roughly, roughly 3%, it starts to go up closer to 6% as we get closer to the, the two-week period. Two weeks before expiration, we start to get our uh, percentages a lot faster. So you stand to make roughly 2% to 6% a day on this trade. If you were to take it, um, you're locking up $100 with a margin. So in a smaller account, you know this is a great trade because that you could take if you're trying to get bearish on the stock. If you have $100 in your account, you have margin enabled, you can definitely take this trade and make a 27% return on that $100 that you lock up. And your only risk is that you lose 73. So you're not completely wiped out on that 100 bucks. And it opens you up for, for future um, future profitability, right? Future trades. It doesn't, it doesn't kill you as an investor, which is why I love credit spreads. <clears throat> now, again, I never recommend making your entire portfolio just bullish or just bearish because you open yourself up for a bull rally in the overall market ruining your portfolio or a bear rally in the overall market ruining your entire portfolio. So when I in the hedge fund open a bullish trade, I simultaneously open a bearish trade. How do I do that? I look at the tool. I find bullish plays. I find bearish plays. I even my portfolio out by opening one of each trade at the same time. Um, and yes, sometimes I don't get a perfect entry in the bearish trade if I'm if I see a perfect entry in the bullish trade when I take it. But too many times has the market reversed the other way, my bullish trade would have gotten margin called, but my bearish trade is doing better than expected. I can close my bearish trade early, take that profit, and then open another bearish trade at a you know on a different stock and get you know more money back and get more money faster. So if my bullish trade doesn't work out, I just made, you know, two, I just collected premium on two different plays before I had to um, get exercise on the other one, which is kind of how I survive in this kind of market environment. It's why I love playing credit spreads in this market environment. If we look back at 2021, 2022, um, I'll pull it up real quick. If we look back at history here, <clears throat> We'll go four hour chart. If we look all the way back, right? <clears throat> we were in a bull market from 2020 to 2022. It was just a nonstop bull market for the most part. We had our little dips. Now, if we look at 2022 to now, we're officially in a bear market. Right, price has come from the all-time high at four hundred and seventy-six dollars, and it's made lower highs. 
right? That's how you can confirm you're in a bearish trend. We're in a bear market, guys. Um, so when you're looking at overall macro environments here, it's so, so important to always be careful and never go too bullish and too bearish because we can see the chop, right? This was in 2022 June. We ran all the way up from 350 to 420. Then we fell all the way from 420 to 350. And then we went from 350 back to 420. So we see this trend where it's continuous chop between 420 and 350. And honestly, the stock market could go back up to 420 and come crashing back down to 350 or lower, or it could break through 420 and just keep going up. You know, with this with this environment, you never know. So that's why it's important to balance your portfolios, take fundamentally good trades. And again, you know, this is on our website, International Investing. We are a licensed hedge fund. I don't give any certified investing advice. I'm not a CPA. I'm just showing you the plays that we're taking, the steps that we're taking in this environment, and it's working out very, very good for us. We are getting an average return of like 20 to 40% every month. So if you tally that up over a year and you add compound investing, we're doing very, very well. And uh, currently we're not taking on clients, but we are probably going to look on look at doing exclusive clients kind of in the future. Um, but it would definitely have to be a client that, that has enough money to make it worth our while um, that we can give enough shares of the hedge fund to. So, you know, just an overall kind of how we operate, how we work. But <clears throat> thank you for tuning in to International Investing. Again, I'm your host, Major Tom. And without further ado, I'll be signing out. Hope you liked our plays. Um, if you have anything to add or any uh, insights on these plays, please say so in the comment section down below. And uh, if you enjoy these videos, please give it a like. It helps me make more videos and it, it helps spread awareness to what we're trying to do over here. Again, our website is 100% free. We put our proprietary tools on our front page of our website so everyone can use them. And, uh, you know, we got to pay maintenance fees on that website and everything else. So if you could, you know, add like the video. Not asking for any monetary support or anything, but I'd really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Have a good night. See ya.